Hi, this is the Decred Consensus Change Log, and I am Jake Yoakum Pyatt. I am the Decred Project Lead, and I'm the CEO of Company Zero, one of the lead contractors for the Decred Project. And we're going to be talking about software and sort of the overall progress that the project has made since uh, Consensus last year in May 2019. First, Decred is a secure, adaptable, sustainable store of value that is driven by the community. And what I mean here, what do I mean here when I say secure? It's secure in the sense that its chain is difficult to majority attack. That is, you can't go back and rewrite the past. It's very expensive because it uses both proof of work and proof of stake to secure the chain. It's adaptable in the sense that the consensus rules can change on the fly without having a contentious fork. And the reason we can do that is because we use proof of stake as a, uh, you know, as our sovereignty mechanism. So the people who hold the coins are the ones who end up making the decisions about the changes that get made. And then we're sustainable in the in the sense that. Uh, in the sense that projects like, you know, blockchain projects are expensive. It's it's difficult to maintain a blockchain and, and extend it. So rather than going to say venture capital for, you know, uh, for, for money to pay people to perform work to build all this out, 10% of every block goes to a goes to a treasury and then funds are paid out of that treasury to contractors to you know write the software, perform the marketing, do the design and you know and and so on. So what have we been up to for the past year? In the past year, there's been a number of changes. I've broken them out into a few groups. The group that we're gonna look at first is the consensus changes. The consensus changes that we've made, you know, uh, one of the changes was made right around consensus last year, which is that Lightning Network support was activated on, uh, on mainnet. And the point of doing that is, is that th there's certain opcodes that you need to activate in order to support the Lightning Network. We had to, you know, we had to activate one of those, and you know, it's done. So now uh, all of the all of the pre uh, the prerequisites are in place for us to use Lightning Network on, on top of Decred. The other thing that we've done, and this is more much more recent, this is maybe a couple months old, is block header commitments. Is if you're at all familiar with with SPV simple simple payment verification wallets. What they do is they use, uh, you know, sometimes some of them use bloom filters, and then uh, more recently there's been a proposal to these things called committed filters. And the committed filters are filters that, um, you know, that at least in theory you're supposed to commit to in a block header so that you can, so that you can um, uh, have a secure SPV wallet, not just one that's quick and convenient, but one that actually has, you know, good uh, security and privacy, uh, you know, aspects. So we we have that and it's activated. So so we have strong SPV support as of two months ago, and uh, you know our our wallets make use of that. Another thing we've been working on, uh, but isn't quite ready to be deployed as a vote, is the decentralized treasury. And and the way that worked is is that there, a proposal went up. A proposal was approved, and and the same thing occurred with both the Lightning Network and the the block the block header commitment uh, change. Is a pro first a proposal goes up, first that's approved, then the work to actually implement the changes occurs. Then after that process occurs, it's released in software, and then there's another final vote on chain to activate these changes. So the decentralized treasury support hasn't been uh, deployed in software, but it's been approved, and it's probably 80 to 90 percent done. So that's going to be deployed soon. The upshot there is is that currently the treasury is a centralized corporate entity um, that is uh, you know that has been making payouts according to um, votes that occur off chain in our proposal system. But soon the the disbursement of funds from that treasury and these you know in the custody of those funds will be occurring strictly on the network using uh you know using consensus rules and voting and and, and all of that so we're look, we're very much looking forward to that change and that's been in the pipeline for about a year the other bucket that you know that, that that's very important here is wallets and privacy um Early last year and then in the summer last year, uh, mobile wallets for Android and iOS respectively were released by Rata Group. And uh, this is great. People have been really enjoying getting the mobile support after not having it for a few years. We decided not to focus on mobile support, uh, you know, that that wasn't that didn't use SPV. So that's why it took us a little bit longer to get these wallets out the door. Um, another major thing that's occurred is is that uh, LND, the Lightning Network Demon, uh, which is which is uh, work work from Lightning Labs, uh, a, you know, a, a Bitcoin uh, a Bitcoin company, 
And we've taken that and ported that to Decred. And so that's DCR LND, and that was ported as of about a year ago, but it's being much more actively deployed. There's been a number of changes to it to, to allow it to integrate into, uh, into our graphical wallets. Um, the initial support for Lightning Network has been integrated into Decrediton, and that occurred, uh, you know, about six months ago in, in December 2019. And what happened there is, is that now DCR LND is actually bundled into our graphical wallet. So there were, for various reasons, we weren't able to do that right away uh, about a year ago, but we've been able to do it since this most recent release, which is 1.5.0. Um, Another big piece of big piece of news here is that we did our initial privacy implementation. It's had a uh, very very good uptake, uh, even better than I had imagined. Originally, I was projecting something like say 15% of all of the coins in circulation using it after a few months. We are now at 23% of the circulating uh, you know the circulating supply of Decred, and that's great to see. And that translates to roughly uh, four you know 46% of the total uh, coins staked on the network. So, so uh, almost half of our stakeholders are using this system. It's great because not only does it give you privacy from a fungibility perspective, you know, say being able to spend and then being able to uh, being able to have some privacy, but it also gives you uh, it also gives you privacy from a sovereignty perspective, which is pretty unique uh, in terms of how Decred has been operating. The this way, so for example, let's say I want to learn who all of the you know major Decred stakeholders are. You can't very easily do it, and uh, and and that's a big asset for the pro both for you know both for both from a privacy aspect and from a uh, sovereignty uh, perspective. Now this support is only command line, so so even I'm kind of uh, amazed with how much uptake we've had considering it's a command line only tool. And we're gonna, going to be extending that to graphical wallets in the, in the near future. Some other work that's been going on in the governance markets and, and other areas is um, we have a contractor management systems uh, in place so that when people put up proposals and get paid, these proposals go up and then the, the contractors that get paid have to be managed. They have to submit invoices. The invoices have to get approved. The invoices have to get paid. So we have a management system in place. It went into production roughly a year ago. So it's been in production for an entire year. It's working pretty well. And you know we're making steady progress uh, integrating that more fully into our payment, uh, into our, you know, sort of our payment uh, process. There's also been a major front end redesign done on Politea, which is our proposal system. Now, now Politea also is our contractor management system. It's just a sort of a different version of Politea. So these front end changes uh, landed about six months ago, and and it, it's a huge improvement in terms of how things look, and uh, you know the look and the feel of it is is massively improved. Another thing that's been going on is that there's a Python implementation of Decred now. So previously there was only the core. Uh, you know, Go implementation, but in the past several months, there's been a lot of work done on a Python implementation, which is great because it's it, it's good to have diversity in terms of the implementations of software that run the Decred network. Another major thing that's going on is the decentralized exchange specification and development. So, uh, you know, I proposed this stuff informally a year and a half ago. A, a, a formal proposal went up a year ago, and then you know a specification was generated, and the you know the work to to create a minimum viable product for for a decentralized exchange is underway, and I'd probably say it's eighty to ninety percent of the way to completion, and and we should be seeing a minimum viable product sometime in the next two to three months, which I'm very much looking forward to, and I expect a lot of other people are. In terms of treasury. Um, the treasury figures, we've been very sparing with our spending from 2016 through 2018. Um, we, you know, we're drawing something like 50,000 Decred, uh, you know, a uh, a year to, to pay for everything. But because the exchange rate uh, for Decred took a massive hit in 2019, we've been spending a lot more Decred. So we spent 136 thousand decred in 2019 but our US dollar spend was just slightly more than it was in 2018 now this is this isn't a huge deal from the perspective of uh, of us having built up a massive backstock in the treasury the treasury balance is currently 637 thousand decred and we've been roughly treading water throughout 2019 and through the first quarter of 2020 so we're not drawing the treasury down uh, a whole lot but we're also not building it up and we we, we hope to see uh, things improve in the not so distant future. Uh, in that regard, and if you and if you're interested in seeing more uh, more more uh, up to date information about this, you can go to uh, dcrdata.org and check it out. Uh, we have charts for that and everything. 
In terms of what's coming down the pike, we have a couple con, uh, consensus changes that are planned in, in the next roughly year. Um, one of them is the decentralized treasury, which I've already talked about. So that's exciting because it takes a, you know, the custody of funds and it turns it from a, uh, you know, from a centralized process where there's a centralized corporate entity and then that entity pays out to the various contractors and turns it into a decentralized process where there's just a, where there's effectively a special account on the network and then to release funds from that account um, stakeholders need to approve the transactions that draw on the treasury so that process is really you know is really important because it removes a potential single point of failure from the project we estimate that that this you know that this change assuming everyone approves it still would go live sometime in you know maybe five months from now so sometime maybe like uh, like October of this year um, another thing that, that we're planning on with uh, consensus changes is to make some changes to the way to the to the Schnorr support within Decred. We launched with Schnorr support, so it supports N of N, uh, you know, N of N signatures. But there are some, you know, there's some details, uh, you know, cryptographically speaking, about why this is why our approach is not ideal. And you know, considering the code is from early 2016 and was added in late 2015. I think it's actually really, our code has stood the test of time quite well, but there still are a few edges and corner, you know, uh, what is it, edge and corner cases that can uh, cause trouble for people who are going to be using Schnorr signatures. So the, the real utility of Schnorr signatures is that it provides uh, a much more robust and uh, much more private multi-sig support. So for example, you could have an N of N multi-sig and have it be private. Our plan is to support uh, threshold signatures as well. So we are, we're planning on doing M of N. So doing this correctly is really is really important. Right now, if, you know, if, we do, if we went live with what we have uh, in terms of Schnorr signatures right now, it would be very unlikely that anyone would shoot themselves in the foot, but we want to make it pretty much impossible that anyone's going to shoot themselves in the foot in that regard. So, so we're we're planning on making some changes to tune the way our our Schnorr signature support works. Uh, sometime in 2020, it might activate in early 2021. Uh, it's you know that that much isn't quite clear yet. On the wallets and privacy front, there's uh, several big you know several big changes coming, and and uh, almost all of these are coming in just the next few months. The first one is privacy integration into Decrediton. Decrediton has, uh, you know, does not support privacy as is, and the reason is is that it's not a command line tool, right? You know, you have to get all these, uh, you have to get, uh, be able to handle all these other edges and corner cases, and then we're also planning on supporting not just privacy for stakeholders, but privacy for people who are receiving funds. So that's an extra use case. We have to add some extra knobs. We have to change the way our, we have uh, these things called voting service providers. We have to change the way those work, and in order to change that, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that have to move around. So we're in the process of moving all those pieces into place, and that's going to be in our next release, uh, the 160 release. Similarly, we're going to be turning, uh, you know, LN uh, Lightning Network uh, on by default in our Decrediton wallet with this coming 160 release. And you know, prior to this, you had to twiddle some knobs in a you know in a in a file in order to make all of this work. Now you don't have to do that, and and that's going to be a you know a big uh, a big win in terms of ease of use for uh, you know for Lightning Network. Another thing that's related here is partially signed decred transactions. This actually relates to the Schnorr signature support that we were referencing, or I was referencing in the last uh, you know in in the last section. And the point of these partially signed decred transactions is that they allow for multi uh, large you know uh, a formal multi signature process to occur. And so everyone is passing around partially signed transactions. So getting this, you know, getting the protocol just right is is very important. Then, and this is actually the bulk of what is in the uh, in the uh, Musig proposal for for Bitcoin. So we're going to be doing it differently because we're going to be taking a slightly different approach regarding threshold signatures. But that's the you know that's the rough plan. In terms of the other future work we have is the D, the the Dex. We've been working on that for almost a year now, and that is going to be ready to you know be released into production in the next few months as well. So so we're very much looking forward to that because it, it's a non-custodial exchange. In the future, we hope to make it a both non-custodial and um, and non and decentralized exchange. The upshot being that. Um, you need to have a server mesh in order to do that. You need to add P2P support. It's it, it's a lot of work, but we're planning to go that way. 
We're also planning to have tighter integration between our proposal system and then our contractor management system so that when you win, when your proposal goes up for a vote and you win, you have more direct uh, sovereignty in terms of reviewing billing and approving other people's invoices who bill against your proposal. So that's, you know, that's another one that's, uh, you know, that should make everything run a little bit smoother. And of course, we have several surprises uh, because that's, you know, more or less how we operate. We like to keep we like to keep people in suspense to some extent. And that's pretty much everything we've got. Um, thanks for listening, and I, I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, the rest of the Decred uh, consensus presentation. Decred is secure, adaptable, sustainable. Learn more at decred.org.